Charisse Kulkarni is from the United Kingdom and he's here at Radio Days. We were talking about journalism. Mm -hmm. Journalism is broken. Yeah, 100%. I mean, that sounds pretty shocking to people, but I really think it is broken because the principles and the practice of journalism have become entirely disentangled. Mm. I got into journalism because I wanted to inform people to help make the world a better place. But actually, I realized in 25 years of journalism, I got the chance to do that very, very little. So actually, what are the ways we can reframe journalism to help people do that? So you said you got to do it very seldomly. What happens the rest of the time? What, what is broken so badly about journalism? Well, we're working habits, formulas and templates. So an example I use is when we do the budget every year, when we have the analysis afterwards, we say, as a result of this budget, you'll be, whatever, £125 a year better off. Now, that seems to most people to be journalism, yes. but actually it's not. That is an ideological statement which says a small state, low tax economy is good for us per se. Better off is defined in such narrow terms that it doesn't allow us to have the discussion about whether more tax might actually be better off for us. Yeah, and we were talking before we uh, came on air about that too in the United States with abortion, such a hot topic at the moment when they say these new restrictive abortion laws in this state and for some people watching, it may be restrictive. For other people, it may be liberating and the saving of life. So it's, even, it's just every word in the script yeah. matters and holds weight, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And that's the formula and the template. You know, when I was doing this research and building templates that we could then test with the users, I had to unlearn so many of the habits of my own journalism. And that's hard, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. Because yes. if we're going to provide better journalism at the end, that's ultimately the aim, because the big question we're facing here is trust. People do not trust journalism, and if we don't fix that, we might as well all give up. Do you think it is getting better or worse? Because when I look at the media landscape in your country, the United Kingdom, we have the introduction of stations like GB News and Pierce Morgan now uncensored and uh, big platforms on talk TV and simulcast in different parts of the world. It seems things are, are kind of becoming more uh, partisan. Yeah, and I'm frankly not a huge fan of that. Frankly, there are newspapers and TV stations in the UK doing straight out racist, homophobic, sexist, etc, 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 coverage. And that's not a world I want to live in. But would they say, um, and I'm playing devil's advocate yeah. now, but like the rise of people like GB News is as a result to the other left-leaning establishments that have gone so far left with their ideologies that because they're not willing to come back into the centre and do fair, unbiased journalism, that they have to open these other stations to counter it so people can maybe watch both and make up their minds somewhere in the middle. Like if we didn't have those other kind of right-leaning conservative stations, then the whole media landscape predominantly is skewed left. Well, for, firstly in the UK, we have a regulatory system which says you have to be neutral and unbiased and so there's big questions about whether they should be being regulated more firmly. But actually, I think it's more about actually, is what is the end goal for these people? Like, if actually we want to vilify immigrants, if actually we want trans, trans people to, you know, to be you know, taking their own lives because they're so kind of uh, stigmatized by society, then go ahead and do that. I don't think that's the world I want to live in. I think journalism has a higher purpose than that. And just for the record, we're not saying those stations we've no. mentioned are aiming for that or advocating for that, but it's just fascinating the way the media landscape is shaping up in the UK, UK kind of taking its cue from the United States and the way their news outlets have gone over the past 10 years, where it's very hard to find unbiased news when you're flicking the channels in the US, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. And I think there's some interesting questions about the causality of this stuff. There's some really good, um, John Byrne Murdoch on the Financial Times put out a really interesting series of graphs yesterday, which talked about attitudes to immigration in the UK. And they tracked the levels of immigration pretty well. But what they tracked better was the number of articles about immigration in the Daily Mail. So the causality is coming from journalism. And journalists often try to kind of ignore the, the kind of responsibility which comes to that, say, oh, we're just giving our users what they want. Yes. And actually, we are shaping the discourse and we have to take the responsibility for that. And that's a very, very big responsibility. 
How do you, as you put it, unlearn what you have learned? I have some friends working in a news network in the United States, which is a, a new news network, and they are trying to do news without the bias. And this person who's in a position of hiring has told me that just the people they have hired, uh, it's so hard, again, with the scripts, with the way they pick their pictures and they tell their stories, to undo what they have learned in other networks throughout the years. I think it's you give people the time and space to think about it, because actually, like I say, this is reconnecting the purpose and the practice of journalism. I think most, if not all journalists, got into journalism for the same reasons I did. And it's actually reconnecting with that purpose rather than the practice as it has been for the last 30 or 40 years. For example, one of the habits we have is writing an inverted pyramid style. That's only around because of the telegraph because it was expensive and unreliable. Technology has moved on 20 generations since the Telegraph, but we're still using that style when it's not actually how people connect with stories. So it's giving people the time and space to think about it and remember, in a sense, why we became journalists in the first place. The interesting term that was coined and made popular by President Donald Trump, fake news, which uh, kind of echoed across the world and has become part of the, the discourse, the vernacular, but do you think, I saw so many radio stations and TV networks, including the Irish public broadcasters, putting out videos saying, uh, you know, journalism is so important, trust your sources and all that. Do you think there was any good to come of that, where maybe it did shake up stations a bit to say, okay, no, a lot of this is loony, saying this is fake news, but maybe we do have to like really look at what we're doing and make sure we are 100% trusted. Yeah, I don't think there's been enough kind of self-reflection from news organizations. They were, they were quick to defend themselves. Yeah, yeah, they're very quick to defend themselves. They never think there's anything wrong with the product. Yes. What about if we change the product? You know, for example, I've done it. I've worked at Westminster. I've worked in politics. You know, I say to people, we can either use anonymous sources or we can have people trust us. We can't have both. And that's an example of how our news organizations work. They think, oh, this person's come to me with this information because I'm such an amazing journalist. Mm -hmm. We need to get over ourselves. They come to you with that anonymous information because they have something to sell and they want you to sell it for them. So actually we need to look harder at our own practices before blaming it all on the consumer. If we worked at Procter & Gamble and blamed everything on the consumer, we wouldn't work at Procter & Gamble very long because soap powder wouldn't be getting sold. So actually we need to have the same attitude with journalism. Hey, great talking to you and Thank enjoy you. the rest of Radio Days. Thank you. Thank you so much.